Hi everybody! Welcome to Reflections Art Studio and Community Classroom. It's an art retreat in the country, just 10 minutes outside of Medicine Hat, Alberta, right on the Wholesome Road, where you can learn art techniques to express yourself. My goal is to help people live a happy, healthy, creative life. Come on in. This is inside my studio. Waiting for the day when everybody can come out and visit and create together. Hi, I'm Renee Dowling and welcome to my studio. Today I thought I would do a visual journaling flip through. It was a journal that I started in November, October, November, with some clients and um, finally remembered to maybe I sh to share it with you. So I'd like to show you and I hope you enjoy. So this journal, every time I journal, I find that every journal is very different from the next. And um, I've learned some new art techniques um, because of lockdown. I've been able to take some online classes myself. And um, I will show you what I've learned and maybe you will um, get a hold of me and we can, I can teach you what I've learned. Just getting you nice and focused here. So on um, this visual journal uh, is, some, is a journal that I hand sewn some um, watercolor mixed media paper together. And I usually use a, a three hole system to sew it together. I just use um, thread that's for jewelry making and it has wax on it so it's so easy to stick through the holes you don't even need a needle to do it and um, so this is not the last page or the or this is not the first page that I did in or in my journal um, it started off by um, when I had some clients out I asked them to um, start with the prompt I am just gonna move my camera a little bit here Sorry about that. Okay, so we started off with a blank page and often I find the hardest thing about starting is looking at a blank page. So I thought I would um, help out the process by um, starting with some journaling. And then often that's really quite easy for people, especially people who are nervous about art and um, then it gives us building blocks. So I, we start with the prompt I am, and the idea was to write really big, in any direction, any color. I did use water soluble pencil and wrote down words that I would use to describe myself. And um, then the next layer, next layer was to collage. And we started off with some neutral colored collage papers. So some musical notes. I'll just zoom in so you can maybe see a little bit. Some musical note pages. I usually start on the perimeter of my page, just so kind of reserving the middle for maybe a focal point. And I use some book pages. And um, before I glued them on, I circled some words that I wanted to concentrate on, like smile. And on here, um, I think with envision, this one here has good intent. So there are words that I thought I might include in my journaling, and I wanted to sort of save them. There were some other ones too, but I've covered them up with my layers. So after you do the initial neutral color background, oh, I also use some, some ledger paper from like a Alberta government telephones, like they don't use them anymore. And then after that, I then started collaging with some colored um, um, scrapbooking paper. So I found some neat kind of 
with some flowers and here's some wrapping paper for birthdays like from the 70s so I collaged that on there and then that sort of became the color scheme that I was going to use trying to limit the colors so using magenta yellow and then sort of a teal green color it's going to be my focus and then here I found some matte on that page that had the same kind of color scheme and then after that then um, leaving some blank space like I said I went mostly around the perimeter of the page and then colored in between the papers with meal color um, crayons or water soluble so you can add water and then spread out the colors so we choose um, one color at a time so start with magenta and then maybe the blues and the yellows and then try not to um, mix the colors too much because I didn't want to get mud but then also I'm not sure what not sure what color I wanted to emphasize so it kind of take the three colors that started with and then integrate it and then after that um, uh, doing a, a wash with some um, gesso and gesso is like acrylic paint or like a primer and so what it does is it just kind of kicks back all of the things and um, make it not stand out so much because it, it looks really busy. And then I didn't cover certain areas because I wanted to have them stand out. That's one thing that I've learned over the years is how not to cover up all of the layers because I've done it before. I finished at the end and you couldn't see any layers at all. So it is a fine art um, to try to figure out what to do and what not to do and it takes practice. So then after that, um, again, adding more layers of collage on top, taking pages from the original or pieces from the original page and right, uh, gluing them down using gel medium or glue stick. And then um, something that I normally don't do, but I have throughout this book is um, using washi tape around the outside or certain places to emphasize the color scheme. And something new things that I've tried on, in this journal too are some rubber stamps, some embossing, and um, here, these people here are rubber stamps that I made many years ago on using just basic white eraser. And I tried stamp, uh, embossing and hey, it turned out pretty good. Um, use some tissue paper. I drew this person and I, I wasn't gonna worry about, you know, if it didn't turn out, it didn't turn out, I just went for it. So that's why I put the word trying underneath here. And um, then went with the circle theme. That's a common uh, symbol that I used. And then um, trying to have large circles, medium-sized circles, and then small circles. So medium-sized to small, and then repeated some up here at the top. And then um, use some rubber stamps to put some words on. So pull some of the words that were on the original layer and to describe myself. I'm happy, I'm blessed, I'm Renee, I'm able, I'm loved, I'm trying, I'm artistic, I'm strong, I'm creative. Um, then I wanted to decided I was going to do some journaling across the top, introducing myself and to the journal kind of thing and then decided to stop there because I didn't want to lose my background that I have. And then um, just kind of tied it all together with a border of, I believe it's probably gelato or water soluble crayon. I always date my pages and sign them to show that it was me who did it and so it kind of gives me a time frame so I can sort of see, have some insight into what I was doing. So I started this with some clients that came out and it sort of evolved after they left and I finished it up and this is what evolved. So the second page is not actually the second page that I did in the journal. I kind of jumped around. But the background of this, the background of this actually started off with me practicing some optical illusions that the teens wanted to, to try. So I always try them out before I show them. And then once I was done, I wasn't loving it, and I also did some of it in pencil, and it was smearing. So I decided to paint over it, and um, I used black. I'm not even sure what kind. This is maybe black ink. I can't even remember anymore. It's been a while. 
Um, I tried to cover up the layers, so I did some rubber stamping with some embossing, some tissue paper. I drew um, with ink on the tissue paper and then collaged it down. Then did some. I found some white ink that or white um, stamp pad that I bought at a garage sale for like a quarter. So I thought, oh, I should try that. I never thought of using white. This worked perfectly. Um, use some symbols to. Again, I started to put I am to continue the theme, but my focus here was the word confused. So I used question marks and these little symbols. They're supposed to be stars, but they don't look like stars to me. They sort of look like whirlwind. Did some, um, some doodling. And then um, I found this rubber stamp that I had and did some embossing with it. And then this musical notes, I put the Corona Rhapsody stem, the words being like, stay home families only are allowed to come here to my studio or one-on-one -on -one sessions, wear masks two meters away. And then there's some barriers like, and then also the, the two friend list if you live alone, which happened to be on someone's list. So anyways, this is with the initial, or one of, after things were opened up, these are some guidelines that came in again. But I was confused about where my business stayed or fit in there because there's a home-based business and nowhere did it mention art studios. So I was very confused. So I ended up phoning my MLA's office and they got back to me and said, basically, I should go for the appointments. People normally don't come out here just out of the whim. They make appointments. So I was allowed to have people still make appointments to come out one-on-one -on -one, or if they lived in the, in the same household, they can come out as a family. So then that sort of cleared things up. And uh, the hearts are like sort of being grateful that I could still keep teaching visual journaling and not necessarily have to do everything online. So then I ended up finishing this, even though this background started in October with the optical illusions, I finished it basically a month later, November 25th, after not liking what was on the page. So I never throw things out, I just, if I don't like it, I cover it up. And this page began with um, a teenage or, or my teenager class, and um, we thought, well, how can we start in a different way? So what we did is I have a box full of um, quotes and words from magazines and articles and su as such, and um, I pulled out this prompt here. It says, yes, it was awful, now please shut up. So I'm like, whoa, that's kind of harsh. That's something that I would never say to somebody. Um, so I thought, well, how, where's this going to go? So um, this was a page that we're sort of just kind of exploring using different things, but also keeping the words that we pulled out of the box in mind. So keeping that in mind, the words awful and please, now please shut up. So I was thinking like, oh, this is kind of harsh. So um, I thought, well, maybe what we could do is do, do some, um, use a modeling paste. So um, I chose the triangle symbols I don't normally use and um, used a stencil and modeling paste. And they're kind of spiky and hurtful, like an arrow can go through. So I thought, oh, that's kind of relevant to, you know, the harsh words, be awful and shut up. So I use the modeling paste at the top and again at the bottom and try to use some larger um, arrows and then some smaller triangles for repeating patterns and then um, decided to use some um, cheesecloth and I just glued it down and um, then I took some ink I'm not even sure what I did now and I just kind of went over it and it made it stand out and um, in the background, I also probably used, I'm not sure what color, it's probably collage paper. It's been so long. I often forget. And that's the great thing about this is that um, when you're finished, people are look at it and say, like, well, how did she do that? And it's great if they can't see the layers. So then um, as I was building layers, I felt like drawing. And so then I decided at first, this here was ended up looking like a witch because it sort of started it around Halloween time. And um, I decided 
after I was almost done that I didn't really like the witch and the face kept changing and with all this modeling paste on it made it hard to draw. So um, I decided to turn it into, instead of a witch, turn it into a tree. And originally this was the arm of the witch and um, I thought it would be more appropriate to have a tree here because I came up with the idea of being tangled up in thing, your memories or tangled up in your thoughts. Um, at first I thought I would use this, like think about, you know, how when you're with other certain people, they tell you the same stories over and over again and you just want to say, yeah, it was awful and then I'll please shut up and move on. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to focus on myself. So I found this little drawing that I did a long time ago, well, actually in the summer, and I thought, well, I could have her thinking this to herself. And her eyebrows are kind of like, you know, that sort of like questionable expression. It's like, you know, the crooked smile kind of thing, like it might be okay, but it's not really. So then I thought, well, I have all this coming, a cobweb, because uh, bad thoughts and feelings and memories kind of are like cobwebs and they just kind of suddenly appear in your brain and they take over. So with the cheesecloth, it reminded me of cobwebs as well. So then I continued the theme of cobwebs and I drew a cobweb and then wrote down, you know, nasty things people have said to me or some bad memories and tried to like do a brain dump and get rid of it all, get it caught up in this um, spider web, but spider webs can easily be taken down as well. So that was kind of metaphorical, how I wanted to get rid of those cobwebs. And then I thought, well, let's put these awful things to, to bed kind of thing. So I drew these coffins, or not coffins, gravestones, but rip, rest in peace, awful, put three of them. And then um, had some hands coming out, grabbing the cobweb and taking them down into the earth to get rid of them. And um, so then also doing some rubber stamping, I put, I am escaping your grasp at last. Going back to over here. And um, I put goodbye beast because, you know, things that you, memories from long ago and things that people say can last forever. Let's try to move on and get rid of this already. And then at the top, your words left cobwebs of pain, but it is time to untangle. And then I drew some little spiders to kind of go with the eerie theme. So there's gesso on here, watercolor paint, and um, I did some journaling. Before I did the cobweb, I did some journaling with white because I didn't want it to stand out and then did some more on this layer. So there's lots and lots of journaling, and this is a nice way to journal and get thoughts out, but a good way to hide them too, so that not everybody needs to be able to read your journaling. That's not the purpose of this. It's to practice some art techniques and get rid of them. And then I drew this lady over top of the cheesecloth, which was kind of difficult. Um, but one thing that I liked about her was, again, not worrying about perfection and uh, just going with the flow with the cheesecloth in the background. And then I also like the fact that there's some, you know, some brighter colors here amongst the black showing like the darkness being lifted. And the same thing on the bottom here. There's some yellows and greens and blues. You might not be able to see it so well. Then the next page is a page that I finished December 29th of 2020. And again, this page started off with um, team clients out and um, we followed the same process with the layering. Um, but this time I made sure that um, one of the book pages, I found this quote, always hunt for something to be glad about. So I thought that's what this focus was going to be. And uh, we had made a bunch of um, background pages using um, acrylic paint on jelly prints. And um, so I wanted to use some of those pages in here. And they actually all started, like, with, ended up being yellow and gold in color. So it went perfectly with always hunt for something to be glad about. And um, the above words here are changed her position. So, you know, this these pages here were quite dark and now changing position about being positive. 
they used tissue paper to go over the layers and then was able to draw this lady on the tissue paper and then did some more layering um, some the last touch was was it this sat empty for a while I'm not sure where it was going to go and so I decided to use some Posca paint pens to continue the idea of find something glad to be um, to be glad about and thinking about sunshine so kind of doing sun rays on these different repeating the patterns and then I wrote about the restrictions about even though it was limiting my business um, it was able it was enabling me to try new things some spend some more time promoting myself um, so I was able to sell some paintings some Christmas decorations earn money to uh, buy a nice Christmas present for my husband that I haven't been able to do before and um, try new things it's about asking the universe for help help and then it came to me so just kind of being really positive had a really good month in December for my business, even though things were shut down. On this page, I began in November, actually November 2nd, and I, took, and I finished it November 16th. And it was based on, um, a client was out and we thought we would want to practice doing faces, but let's do something different. Let's start off with some magazine faces or pieces of magazine. So um, this lady is I started with eyes from the magazine and then built up the face. And this one was starting with a mouth. And this one, mm, I don't know, it has so many layers that it didn't turn out. So I ended up tissue paper on top and layers and layers. And finally, I just start, decided to settle with this face even though it wasn't that great and uh, so to start off off all these faces and i wasn't sure where it was going and then uh, so i started collaging book, book pages over top and uh, gessoing and then picked a color scheme and then i ended up drawing all these stripes oops sorry all these stripes on my page um because it sort of felt like you know, at this stage, things were happening uh, in the United States with a boat coming up. And normally, I haven't paid much attention to it. But now that my son lives there, it hit home a little harder. So I could feel the angst in the air. And there was all the protests and the shootings and Black Lives Matter and uncertainty. So um, I, I drew up these set... Uh, bars here sort of like jail cell and um, people felt like their freedoms were slipping away and people weren't wearing masks and it was making me nervous because of all the riots and demonstrations even in in medicine hat people were demonstrating and not social distancing and felt disappointment in the air because people weren't following the protocols and every time people don't this is my opinion and it just makes us being all locked up even longer. Whoops! Ugh. Get excited and then knocked on the camera. Oh, my stand's falling apart. Please stay. So anyways, the tally marks here are how many days since the restrictions have been on or how many people have died. I can't remember. I think it was how many people died. I thought, no, it must have been how many days. Anyways, so I was thinking about how many people did die during this pandemic and feeling sad. And these, this whole page is about what I saw about people hurting and uncertainty and people were scared and then did some more journaling over top of the faces to kind of finish up. And then um, one of the next pages 
is using some of the similar techniques by starting off with neutral, then adding more color and more layers and washi tape and starting off with a prompt, I am. Again, I had clients out at this time. So I felt like I was sort of like a broken record for myself, but this was um, in October. So this is um, sort of before all these other pages were done. And just kind of starting off with the journaling, and then I can still see the journaling in the background, but then pulling it out and then adding it again at the top. And then um, this page here was the first page that I did in October, um, following Willow. She's on YouTube and um, on different art classes online. And so I did one of her classes and that's where I learned all some different techniques about starting with the neutrals, adding color, filling in spaces to integrate everything together, and then having a focal point. And then each layer has journaling again, and then even journaling with giving myself some advice, stay true to you. And people have all kinds of ideas. Oh, they want to learn this, they want to learn that, but it's something that I'm not interested in teaching right now. I want to stick with visual journaling. And so, you, you know, trying to stick to my guns and not worry what other people are saying to me. And so I gave myself some advice. I am strong. I'm artistic. I'm caring. I'm brave. I can fly. Down the side, I repeated that. Did some more. Put congratulations on top and counting your blessings and... The music underneath is, I'm reading on a jet plane, so it's kind of related to the flying thing you do. And some using washi tape that I don't usually use, that use putting glue under, underneath made it stick better. And then doing lots of journaling here to tie everything in and across the top. So kind of the trick here is to pick a theme that you see something in your layers and then build upon it and repeat it in different sizes and different um, hues, lights and darks. And then the final page in my book is, re is and I'm applying what I learned in the willow, willowing um, art class. And again, starting with journaling, um, this time the prompt was, I love you. And the idea was my clients were supposed to write, I love you, and then put their name. It was, this idea is to, you know, tell yourself that you love you, yourself, and quit being so critical. And all my clients said they've done, they've enjoyed this process, but they also felt very uncomfortable because they're so used to telling themselves negative things. So this was about positive well-being, mental health, and so writing down the reasons why you love yourself. And. Um, I give them lots of times to keep pushing themselves and go on beyond the physical things, but attributes to describe yourself and not focus on like, I'm a mother, I'm a wife kind of things, but what makes you, you. And um, so, um, I wasn't sure where this was going again. So then I was looking through my stash of ephemera and found some, um, doodles that I did for, on some like envelopes so I cut them out and glued them on here and um, actually I think they were on tissue paper because they were so translucent and then I found some quotes from some from some artists that I put on here I put one from Georgia O'Keeffe I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way things I had no words for and then one from Vincent van Gogh, if you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. And then a final one from Pablo Picasso, inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. Otherwise it just sits there dormant and don't grow. And then um, I added their names. I have a little typewriter, I put it on some um, tissue paper. Or type right. I typed on some tissue paper and then collaged it on, and then went with the theme of love. So I added some hearts 
going in different directions to kind of pull everything together. And then I also added some little tiny watercolor paintings that I did on some practice paper. I was trying some pe people out. And I love these little guys, so I put them on there. Not worrying about details and correctness and just had fun. Good little things to put on. And then again, ended up doing some more journaling at the top, bringing out some of the words that I wrote previously. And then I believe in me and I love you and me, I put on here and then put here a note for, for you. And here is the back. So I hope you enjoyed taking a peek through my visual journal and maybe I gave you some ideas that you haven't tried before. Um, if you're interested in learning some more or some of these ideas, you feel free to contact me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I have a YouTube channel, Renee Dowling at Reflections Art Studio. And um, you can email me at Renee Dowling Renee Dowling at ReneeLovesArtReflections.com and I'm willing to do online classes with you, private sessions. Right now with the restrictions, we can do one-on-one -on -one classes here at my art studio and um, when you come, I provide all of the materials unless you want to use your own and everybody gets a homemade journal to take home to continue working in. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with me and I hope you enjoyed what you saw and I hope you can gather some supplies at home and try some new things out. If you have any questions, just let me know. Goodbye from Reflections Art Studio and Community Classroom.